This is Grand, a town like yours or mine, where life doesn't always turn out the way you think it will. Janice lives in a trailer with her daughter, Etta, and an unexpected house guest. Nothing he wears is ever completely buttoned. He's a bad boy. Take my word for it. Yeah, but he's cute. This is Harris Weldon and Desmond, his manservant, and Norris, his son. Norris Weldon. Remember me? No. I was a, I was a fat kid. You used to put in a headlock while the other guy stole my pants. Tom and Carol Ann, married less than a year, are still learning things about each other. Like the fact that Tom already has a son. Tom, what other secrets do you have, huh? What else haven't you told me, Tom? It is Tom, isn't it? It's grand. Next. Can't you be nice to him? It's been his last day for three days now. <laughs> Maybe his dad won't pick him up today either. He will if he wants to see him alive. <laughs> Why don't you like Dylan? No, it's not him. It's the breed. He's a bad boy. Women always fall for bad boys. <gasps> What's bad about Dylan? He ran away from home. He stole his mother's car. I'm pretty sure he's been sneaking my cigarettes. And nothing he wears is ever completely buttoned. He's a bad boy. Take my word for it. Yeah, but he's cute. And sensitive. And he told me that I was the first good thing that ever happened to him. Oh, Etta, I pity you. He <laughs> doesn't even know I like him. Did someone say breakfast was ready? <laughs> Put on a shirt. Oh, I'll go get it off the line. I hand washed it for you, Dylan. Sit down. Eat your cereal. Do I smell steak? Yeah. And that's all you're gonna do with it is smell it. Eat your cereal. I had trouble sleeping last night. I just lay there listening to you breathe. <laughs> Did you know you lick your lips in your sleep? <laughs> Etta, where's that shirt? Happy, darling? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Carol Ann, about us having a kid. You haven't changed your mind. No. Oh. No, not at all. In fact, wouldn't it be great if we could just have a kid without all the morning sickness and the labor pains and the stretch marks and... Tom, <laughs> that is, that's all part of the miracle. You know, I read an article that said, the pain of birth actually prepares you for the agony of being a parent. <laughs> Love you, Caroline. What's wrong, Tom? Well, you, uh, you remember I told you I had been married before? Yes. <laughs> I, I have a son from that marriage. You have a son? Yeah. So you had sex with your previous wife? <laughs> Yes. We, we were married. Not that happily, though. But you have a son. Yeah. How could you not have told me this, Tom? Well, I, was, I was going to, you know, but when I told you I'd been married before, you took it so hard. I took it fine. You locked yourself in the bathroom and you shaved your head with my electric razor, honey. Well, you could have picked a better time to tell me than our honeymoon. In any way, I was planning on changing my hairstyle. Oh, darn it. Oh, Caroline, darling. How long have you had this son? Well, Dylan is 13. Dylan! Dylan! Oh, that's the name I wanted to use! Remember? Oh, we were looking through the baby name book, and I said I loved Dylan, and you said you did, too. Oh, I 
do. Now, don't get so excited. We can have two Dylans. Oh, that's not the point. Tom, what other secrets do you have, huh? What else haven't you told me, Tom? It is Tom, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, I feel like I've been living with a stranger. I mean, this is... This is like a Barbara Eden movie of the week here, Tom. I mean, if you can abandon your own child, you can abandon me. You could abandon anyone. You're not going to lock yourself in the bathroom this time, Carol Ann. I was... I was just going downstairs. I wanted to get some stuff that I needed. Carol Ann. Open the door, Carol Ann. This is one of those things that tests a marriage. We're going to get through this all right, honey, together. <laughs> I'm going to stand right here until you open this door, no matter how long it takes. Hello? Janice, this is not the best. I, I can't. I can't right now. No, don't bring them over. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Honey, I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on you by standing out here. I'm just going to go out for a little while. Then don't bother to come back. Well, you don't mean that. Great. This is what I get for being truthful with you. Don't come back. Thank you for being so understanding. You know why you won't amount to anything, Norris? Well, what did you tell me, Father? Because you don't think. I try not to. It's... I know. It's your whole stupid philosophy. What took you so long? Did you give the blood? Did they take your blood? Yes, yes, we had a flat tire on the way back, and this bonehead doesn't carry a spare. Well, carrying a spare is negative thinking. Oh. <laughs> Did you see my surgeon? Did he seem in good health? Did he mention me? No. Doesn't anyone care that I'm going under the knife tomorrow? Desmond, relax. I got you a New York surgeon. He's removed a million gallbladders. He's taken things out of presidents, for God's sake. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've always had this intense, irrational fear of dying on a table. You know, maybe they would cut you open on a lazy boy. <laughs> Use some common sense for a change, Norris. There's an elderly man just about to undergo a serious operation. You're scaring him. I didn't scare him. You did too. Did not. You did too. Did not. Shut up, both of you. <laughs> I feel the barriers between master and servant are crumbling here. Can't you two try and get along? Thirty years I've listened to this nonsensical sniping. I'm weary of it. See, you got him upset. I did not. I did too. Please leave my quarters. Oh, Desmond, Immediately. Well, who put the burr under his cell? <laughs> ah, it's a gallbladder talking. Oh, this looks like a good spot, doesn't it, Dylan? Why can't we just go back to your house and watch TV? Well, I'm trying to make up a little for the ten years I didn't spend with you. If you're feeling guilty, buy me something. <laughs> Camping's lots of fun. Look how happy these people are. <laughs> you still didn't tell your wife about me, did you? Yeah, I told her. So what, did she freak? She didn't freak. No, she was a little upset that I hadn't told her before. We're going to stay out here until she cools off. Just overnight, though. You know, a couple days. Week. Here, you can hold this. Come. Excuse me, sir. I couldn't sleep. I thought you might share a brandy with me. Gentlemen, I know you're frightened about this operation tomorrow, but nothing bad's going to happen to you. I won't allow it. But... Should anything happen to me, I want your promise that you'll be kinder to Norris. Kinder than I already have? <laughs> All right. There's something else. You know I would never purposely do anything to hurt you. But if I do go gentle into that good night, I want to go with a clean conscience. What did you do? It was the summer of 1955. <laughs> I accompanied you on holiday to Saint-Tropez with the third Mrs. Weldon. Vivica. 
As you may remember, you were having a dalliance with that French B-movie dolly, Claudette, Claudette. <laughs> you know about that? And so did Vivica. Oh. She was a very vengeful woman, sir. The beautiful ones usually are. <laughs> anyway, she saw you one night with the little baguette. <laughs> it was a rainy Thursday. She came to my room, reeking of creme de menthe. And there she took out her revenge again and again. <laughs> and again. <laughs> And again. I don't believe that last again. You can forget about your Christmas bonus now. There's more. Later, Vivica claimed she was carrying my child. What happened to it? You tell me, sir. It's Norris. <laughs> you cuckold me! You're the natural father of my son! I oughta... I oughta... I, 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 I. I'm not Norris's father. I'm not the blame. You are. Congratulations. So I guess you won't be challenging me to a duel. <laughs> Hold the light steady, please. At least now I know where it comes from. Where what comes from? Me being such a screw-up. Mom said I inherited it from you. Yeah? What else did she say about me? Not much. Just that you split. Well, someday I'll tell you the real story when we have the time. I've got a minute. Well, I was selling cars in San Fernando Valley. Your mom was a rich girl from Beverly Hills. Let's get in the tent. <laughs> she came in to test drive a the car. She charged it on her father's American Express. A month later, we were married. Yeah, her parents never thought I could provide her with the kind of life she deserved. They offered us money, I, I refused. I had my pride. So we moved into their pool house. <laughs> when you were born, they tried even harder to split us up. Yeah, they turned her against me. They'd have swim parties, the three of them, and wouldn't invite me. <laughs> but I hung in there. And one day I came home from work and I, I clicked my remote control for the automatic gate. Wouldn't open. They had changed the frequency. <laughs> I honked, I screamed, I tried to climb over. And... <sighs> if I'd been old enough to walk, I'd have buzzed you in. I gave you up too easy, Dylan. Stuff happens. Sure does. Dad? Hmm? What's that? I don't know. It's probably just the wind. Ah! Ah! Back at you. <laughs> Let me introduce you. Dylan, this is Norris. Norris, this is my son. Whew. So, uh, Norris, you take a lot of walks in the woods at night? Yeah, well, Desmond's having surgery tomorrow. I guess I'm a little anxious. What brings you out here? Urge to camp. <laughs> well, he's lucky. He has a father who likes to do stuff with him. Only been a father for about a day and a half. It's tough. Well, son's no day at the beach either. Well, maybe I, I'd give you a few tips to make the son-father thing a little easier for you. Well, one, don't expect much of your child. Well, good manners, okay. I mean, you don't want some silly monkey throwing food around. <laughs> Two, uh, well, show your kid that you love him, you know? 
Play with them. Throw them up in the air and catch them. That's key. <laughs> and hug your kid a lot. Yeah. Not in front of his friends. What number are I up to? Three. Now, four. Don't call him a bonehead. Five. Try to have as few wives as possible. Under three if you can. Yeah. I mean, a, a kid has to know he has parents he can rely on and recognize. <laughs> well, family's very important. Where are you going? Home. Sure you can find your way? It's just about 200 yards that way. You're camping in our backyard. A lot of good friends of mine stayed in this hospital. Joe Riley, my plant manager. He died right down along the hall. Bob Porter, we went to school together. He croaked in the cardiac unit. <laughs> and Jim Smith, he just came to visit his wife and... <laughs> Is Desmond gonna be all right? Oh, yeah, 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 sure. He's gonna be fine, honey. Hey, good things happen in hospitals, too. You were born here. I bet Dylan was born in a hospital, too. Mr. Wilton. Yes, Doctor. I'm afraid Desmond has lapsed into myofibril soteriosis. What does that mean, Doctor? I don't know. I just made it up. <laughs> Not bad, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking I might take medicine up as a career. Norris. Don't. No, no, I'm pretty good at this, really. I stopped in this one room, I took this woman's blood pressure and discharged her. <laughs> Should have seen how happy she was. <laughs> it was a good feeling. You know, before last night, that might have upset me. But Norris, I actually find you an amusing character now. Well, thanks, Dad. Call me Harris. <laughs> well, Desmond's in recovery. Everything went slicker than Bear Grease. Oh, that's right. good news, Doc. Hey. hey, hey. hey. <laughs> oh, good work in there, uh, Paul. Yeah, I'm Norris. Thinking about getting into your game. What do you guys make? About two, three hundred thousand a year? Coletta and I are gonna go down to the gift shop and see if we can find something cute for Desmond. Norris, why don't you come with us? Well, yeah, good idea. I'll get you my professional discount. Oh, yeah, and Paul, uh, when I get done with medical school, we'll play golf. <laughs> Desmond's son. <laughs> Desmond's son? He can't be Desmond's son. Why not? Well, you and Norris both gave blood. Norris is type O. Desmond's AB negative. AB negative can't produce an O. Never? I've never seen it. Well, you haven't been everywhere. <laughs> it could happen in France. <laughs> Desmond. Oh, Desmond. Oh, God, I lived. I should never have told you about Norris. Oh, that's all right, because... Because we'll keep it our little secret. Hey. You take Norris to baseball games? Help him find something to do with his life? <laughs> you dyed your hair. I tinted it. Carol Ann, everything's gonna turn out fine. I really believe it will. I don't know how I can ever trust you again, Tom. Anyone who can lie about having children, it's... Children? No, one child. And it's not all my fault that I didn't tell you. Oh, whose fault is it? Mine? Well, you are the one. When I told you I'd been married before, you went into the bathroom, you locked I know, the door. I know, I know. I shaved my head. Big deal. You gotta keep throwing it in my face. It made an impact on me. I'm sorry. Well, Tom, for your information, I'm not the same person I was then. I'm not just some little piece of fluff that's blown around by your every whim. I spend my days screwing things on an assembly line. I'm not the person I was. No, you're not. Now you have black hair. I was planning on doing this anyway. I'm gonna go. Carol Ann, look, I'm here because I want our marriage to work. Now, I should have told you about Dylan. All the time your hair was growing back, I wanted to. 
I just didn't have the courage. I was scared to death of losing you. You were really afraid of losing me? It's true. Tom, I'm so glad you came back. How long am I supposed to sit out there? You said a couple of minutes. <laughs> I know you. You're the kid in the Porsche. Your son is the one who smashed into me last week. Hey, you dyed your hair. It looks great. <laughs> really? You think... Oh, come on. He is full of it, Tom. I mean, really, excuse my French and yeah. everything, but give, give, he give, is... Give, give, give him a chance, Carol Ann. Now, look. I didn't like him when I first met him, either. <laughs> Where is he staying? Here. He's my son, Carol Ann. Hey, I'm gonna take off, okay? I can tell she doesn't want me around. That's cool. I'm used to it. My own mother doesn't like me. Dylan. Dylan, wait. If you want to stay here for a while, that's okay with me. Really? Yes, I, w I want you to stay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Smithson. Oh, Tom. What? Oh! <laughs> Grant will return after these messages. I bet Dylan went back to L.A. Aw, oh, Etta, you'll meet other boys. Boys with glasses. <laughs> boys who like computers. Boys with a future. Boys who will treat you right. Yuck. And well, better you should yuck now than regret your entire life at 32. I'll get it. Hi, I just want to let you know. <laughs> and, uh, get off of him. Well, this isn't exactly what I had in mind as far as me having a child. I mean, I figured I'd have the opportunity to carry it in my womb and all, but um, this could be fine, too. Oh, and Tom, hmm. if he touches me there again, I'll, I'll have to kill him. <laughs> kind of like you as a brunette. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Next, on an all-new L.A. Law, it's the case of Ann Kelsey versus Rosalind Shays in an all-out partner war. And Friday night, the True Blue team comes to the rescue at a special time, 8, 7 Central and Mountain, followed by a special two-hour Mancuso FBI Friday night. <laughs>